HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Shout out to Chandler family. We thank you and we greet you here at Hebrew Readers Church. We hope everybody's having a wonderful Shabbat today. We have a great lesson today. Uh, let love be the boundary. Um, we are going to be going into the understanding of the greatest and the second greatest commandment today. Um, I'm your brother, Zachla, and with me is... Brother Kasafo. <laughs> 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 all right with no further ado let's go ahead and get this lesson started all right we're going to go through the understanding of the two greatest commandments and how to keep them in truth and what they all contain as far as understanding for we know that the whole law is contained in them so let's dive in and gain some understanding Brother Costa, can we start at Mark chapter 12, verse 29 and 30, please? Sure. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Yache answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our Allah is one Lord. Right. So Allah being one, he's single-eyed and it's not of a double mind. But says what he does and does what he says. Let's see what Allah asks us to do in the first greatest commandment. Continue, Brother Casa, please. Verse 30. And thou shalt love Ahaya, thy Allah, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So being single-minded, we wouldn't do anything half-hearted. Alahim said all in every respect. He said, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. He said all in every respect, not just in the parts that we feel comfortable doing. So it's our job to grow in his commandments and understand ourselves as to why we have difficulties in certain areas and overcoming those areas for our salvation. Can we jump over to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, please? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For Allah hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Right. So right here we get to see that fear is a major cause of stumbling for many of us. The fear of letting go. The fear of not doing or having what you're used to having or doing. The fear of the unknown not being in control. But when we really realize how insignificant we are and how we can't control anything that goes on in our lives except for our decisions to act or to do something in a situation. For example, how we can't make the hairs on our hair to grow or we can't change the height of our stature. We can't say grow get taller and it happens so we really don't have any control in any situation except how we react to it or how we're going to respond to it once you realize that you really have no power outside of yourself it really humbles you and gives you a new mindset the only deciding factor when it comes to your fate and all of this is how you serve Allah because he controls what happens to you. Now, whether you're going to walk upright or obey his voice and spirits, or you're going to walk in your own devices and please yourself, that's every decision. But fear is the source to walk in your own devices for the fear of not feeling in control. Now, let's touch on some of these words in 2 Timothy 1 and 7 so that we can get further edification and get more understanding. Um, power he said he gave us 
um, but of power. Now, power is the power, the ability to change is actually one of the holy virgins. Power is the power to change. So if Allah gives it to us, we're going to get further into the lesson. We're going to go into um, how we can actually attain it. Um, but if Allah gives her to us, it's for our good to utilize. So we shouldn't view change as a bad thing if Allah gave it to us for good. So if it's one of his holy virgins, it's something good. So we shouldn't look at change as bad or negative because change actually means that we're growing. Now, love, um, I'm jumping into G26 on this one. It says, brotherly love, affection, goodwill, love, benevolence, All right? So I'm going to touch on the goodwill right now. The goodwill of love is to want the best for others and also to want the best for yourself. So if I have a good will towards my brother, I want to see my brother do well. I want to see my brother flourish. I want to see my brother walk uprightly and get to the place where he needs to be in Elohim and for himself. I'm not going to, to withhold information that could actually help him because I have a good will for him. I have love. I have affection for him. I want to see him prosper. I want to see him do well. I want to see my sister do well. So that love, that brotherly love has to be in our hearts because that's what Elohim gave us. Also sound mind. This is G4995, which is discipline. That is self-control. Sound mind. Now the Thayer's definition goes into more understanding for us as far as it comes to sound mind. And I'm going to read it. An admonition or calling to soundness of mind, to moderation and self-control. Now, the reason I really like the Thayer's definition, giving more um, explanation or expounding on the definition, is because it says an admonishing, a calling to soundness of mind. So this is something that we have to grow in. Just as love, we have to grow in love. Just in power, we have to grow in it. Or we have to ask or get to a certain place where we can receive it. Because anytime you have, if and I'm pretty sure we all experience this, you go through situations, you go through um, circumstances, and you just don't get it. You don't get exactly what it is that you're supposed to be learning in that circumstance. But eventually it comes and it clicks. That's because you are ready to receive power. You are ready to receive the change. So it's the same with a sound mind to have that discipline or to have that temperance or that self-control. It's a calling to the soundness of mind. So Allah is calling us to it so that we can actually receive it and actually start walking in discipline. It takes, it, it takes, it takes, and this is just not discipline or, or self-control in all aspects. You have to learn discipline and self-control in different aspects of your life. It doesn't just go across the board. And that's through experience. So the more experience you have in certain situations, the more you've you've increased in, in, in the knowledge and understanding of what it is that you're going through, the more you will have a sound mind in that area of your life. So this is why it's a calling to soundness of mind, to moderation and self-control. So this is... This is for our help. This is for our gain. Allah is strengthening us so that we're able to be able to um, put these garments on and actually walk in them. Kasi, you got anything before we keep going? No, that was good. Okay. All right, let's jump over to 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, please. 
First John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of Allah Hayim. And everyone that loveth is born of Allah Hayim, and knoweth Allah Hayim. He that loveth not, knoweth not Allah Hayim, for Allah Hayim is love. For Allah Hayim is love. So this is how we can try our own spirit and others. If you or another doesn't have a sincere goodwill for yourself and others, that's a good sign to examine that area. If you only have goodwill for some, and when dealing with others, that goodwill decreases, or your thoughts toward them are projecting them doing wrong or having a bad intent towards you without facts of that being true, it would be good to examine yourself. Because that love is the first step for us to truly know Allah I am and assess to be able to view things from his perspective. For Allah I am is love because that's the garment that he's clothed in. All right. So let's continue. We're going to jump over to 1 John 5 and 2, Brother Casa, please. 1 John 5 and 2. By this we know that we love the children of Allah Hayim, when we love Allah Hayim and keep his commandments. Now, this is exactly the point um, we're going to get into, is that if you don't learn to keep the first greatest commandment, you can't keep the second. It says, by this we know that we love the children of Allah Hayim. So this is the seal to let us know whether we're doing it correctly or not. By this we know that we love the children of Allah Hayim. This is our brothers and sisters. When we love Allah Hayim and keep his commandments. So when we have that love towards Allah Hayim and have that benevolence toward Allah Hayim and goodwill towards Allah Hayim, we want to see his people flourish. We want to flourish in him. And we keep his commandments. Then we're truly, this is how we know that we love Allah Hayyam. So by having that sincere love in us and truly examining ourselves through Allah Hayyam's law to find the areas we struggle in and overcome that so that we're able to keep his commandments entirely, being grounded in sincerity ourselves would allow us to keep his commandments and it wouldn't be a burden to us to do it since we're sincere and truly want to do it from the heart and not only because we feel it's the right thing to do or not feel it's the right thing to do as to why we wouldn't keep it. Let's continue in 1 John 5 and 3, Brother Casa. Sure. For this is the love of Allah, Hayim, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So when we're sincere, the commandments are not grievous because we want to keep them. That's what actually shows the sincerity of our hearts. We're not dragging our feet to have to do it. We're not uh, groaning or we're not feeling like we're being held back. If we have any of those emotions, that means that it's grievous to us. And it's going to be hard for us to keep it because we're, we're double-minded where we have two contrary thoughts. So that would hinder us from actually being sincere and loving Allah Hayyam and keeping his commandments. So that's the act of love towards Allah Hayyam, right? Which is keeping his commandments. That's the act of love. But how do we get the love? How do we get that love within ourselves? Let's jump over to James chapter 1, verse 2 and uh, through 5, Brother Casa, please. Sure. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it out joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Because that means we're learning. And if we're learning, we're growing. Continue, Casa, please. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
Patience and trials leads to love through the learning experiences. So we should joyfully go through trials that we may learn what Allah is teaching us. Let us not look at it as why me or it's not fair in our haste, but instead looking for the lesson for our growth in that area. We should be diligently looking for the lesson in every circumstance. Because if we're looking for the lesson, we're looking to be edified. Alahayim is speaking to us through the experiences that he takes us through. And we may not understand why we're going through an experience, but he does. So the best things to be doing is praying what it is that you need to learn in this experience. And also being vigilant to see and to examine yourself as to how you may be responding to a, a circumstance or what mood you may be in in the circumstance so that you can see, hey, this may be it. Let me pray about this so that I can gain the understanding and actually get through the trial quicker than thinking that everyone else is the problem. Continue, Casa, unless you have anything. That's great. Verse four. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Right. Because patience will lead to perfection of allowing the Holy Spirit to clothe us with her garments if we learn to truly walk in the love of Allah in our hearts. We will be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Continue, Kasim. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Allah that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now, this is where we go into a understanding that's going to truly help us. We have to ask for the Holy Spirit to dwell with us from the Father. Seeing that she is his portion, and only he can send her to us. And this goes not only for wisdom or the Holy Spirit. This goes for any of Allah daughters. When it comes to the Holy Virgins or the fruits of the Spirit, we have to ask. And that's where the humility of heart comes in, is that we actually have to ask him for something to be clothed in their garments, and we're actually going to go into it um, a little bit further in the lesson, or probably in about the next couple of um, scriptures. We'll be going into it to really understand, because it says, if any lack wisdom, let him ask of Allah, that giveth them in liberally, he'll give her to you. But there are requirements as to what we have to do for it to be given to us. Okay, uh, let's continue. Let's jump over to Sirach chapter 1, verse 5 through 10. Brother Casa, please. Sirach chapter 1, verse 5. The word of Allah Most High is the fountain of wisdom, and her ways are everlasting commandments. To whom hath the root of wisdom been revealed? Or who hath known her wise counsels? Unto whom hath the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest? Or who hath understood her great experience? There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. He created her, and saw her, and numbered her, and poured her out upon all his works. She is with all flesh according to his gift, and he hath given her to them that love him. Right. So we can understand. Allah created wisdom. He created the Holy Spirit. He saw her. He numbered her. He divided her. And poured her upon all his works. So she's enough to sustain all of us. And she is with all flesh according to his gift. So this is what we have to ask of him. That he may give her unto us as a gift. 
and he giveth her to them that love him. So that's one of the requirements. One of the requirements is that we actually have to love him to receive her. What other requirements are there, Brother Casa? Uh, let's jump over to James. Go back over to James. We're going to be at one, verse 1 and 6, please. James chapter 1, verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right. Now look at that. What would show that we're double-minded? One, if we don't love Elohim and keep his commandments, as we learned previously. If we're not doing that and what we're asking of Elohim, we're double-minded. If we're asking and we're wavering, meaning that we're doubting, which that means that we're not actually keeping the commandments and we're not actually loving Elohim, as we're going to understand how doubt plays into um, partiality. We're going to actually understand why it actually causes us to waver and why it shows that we're double-minded. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So asking Allah with a single heart in mind, not desiring the Holy Spirit or any of his Holy Spirits for thy own glory, but truly sincerely wanting his love in you so you can serve him and love him and others. So we have to ask for it. As they say in the world, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. We have to ask, seeing that love is Ahaya's daughter and Yache's sister. They have dominion to allow her to dwell with you. And the shepherd of hermits, it speaks of the stones being carried in through the gate by the virgins, which are the fruits of the spirit. Or, or the fruits of the spirit are the holy virgins. Um, it kind of differs. So um, the holy virgins, it's more than the fruits of the spirit. There's more of them, but um, they, they, they correlate. Seeing that we're called to humility, understanding that we're carried and not doing the carrying. And you're going to understand what I'm talking about once we read the Shepherd of Hermes. It's only through Allah's mercy that we're safe and have what we need every day. And even learning the things that trouble us or will weaken, Allah shows those things to us through our experiences. Um, Kasa, you got anything? Um... Mm, yes, that's... Good. I don't have anything to add in what you're saying. Okay. Let's jump over to the Shepherd of Hermes, Parable 9, Chapter 4, Verse 8, please. Hermes, Parable 9, Chapter 4, Verse 8. And they say to the men who were bringing the stones in, Abstain from your parts altogether from handing in the stones for the building, but place them by the tower that the virgins may carry them through the gate and hand them in for the building. For if, say they, they be not carried in through the gate by the hands of these virgins, they cannot change their colors. Labor not therefore, say they, in vain. Hmm. Now look at this. The angels were admonished not to labor in vain by carrying us through the gates, but instead for us to do what is necessary for us. And I'm going to expound on that. The virgins had to carry us through the gates. And as we read the next verse we're about to read, you're going to understand why it's a, a portion or a work for us to be carried in through the gates by the virgins and not for the angels just to give it to us liberally by doing the work for us and carrying us in. Casa, can we read um, chapter 13, verse 2, please, in Shepherd of Hermits? 
Sure. Chapter 13, verse 2. And these virgins, who are they? They, saith he, are holy spirits, and no man can otherwise be found in the kingdom of Allahayim, unless these shall clothe him with their garment. For if thou receive only the name, but receive not the garment from them, thou profitest nothing. For these virgins are powers of the son of Allahayim. If therefore thou bear the name, and bear not his power, thou shalt bear his name to none effect. Look at that. Now we just learned that we had to ask Allah for wisdom to be given unto us. And also we have to ask for the holy virgins to be given unto us. But it said no man can otherwise be found in the kingdom of Allah unless these shall clothe him with their garment. And we actually have to be carried in. That just shows you how powerful the garments that we're putting on from them once we receive them are to us that it actually carries us into the kingdom we're not walking with the garments on i hope y'all caught that so by asking Allah for the fruit of love and let's use that as an example when it's given the spirit will clothe us with their garment for us to be able to walk in it there's no glory to ourselves. We have to be clothed in the fruit of the spirit and bear the name. We can't just profess Yache and not walk in the same garments as him. That's why it said that these are his powers. Mm -hmm. Now, if we only profess the name Yache and didn't walk in the same garments as him, it would make us hypocrites. And that's not what Allah wants for us. This is why in Matthew 7 and 22, when it said, Many shall say, Allah, didn't we cast out devils in thy name? Didn't we prophesy in thy name and do many wonderful works? And Allah said, I never knew you. It's because they professed the name, but they weren't clothed in the same garments as him. They bear the name only. And it was to none, it was to none effect because it didn't save their soul. Let's um jump over to James 1 and 18, unless you got anything, Kasim. Just that was Isaiah preached the same thing, that we were drawing nigh with our lips, but our heart wasn't with him. Being clothed with those garments shows that our heart is actually with him. Right, because that takes us, that literally is funny. The We're still on the first commandment. We haven't even got to the second commandment yet. So you can actually understand that all of these things that we're going, we're going into right now are just about the first commandment. Yeah. Because to love Allah with all thy heart, all thy might, and all thy soul, and all thy strength, you have to do these things. You have to implement and understand these things to be able to love him in the first place before you can actually go and love anyone else. I'm ready when you are, Brother Cousin. James chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So if we come single-minded just to serve Allah and not looking for glory for ourselves to be righteous or wanting to be better than another, we will receive our petitions and become Allah first fruits. So how do we know if we received our petition from Allah after we asked? Can we read James chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, please? James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, 
without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. All right. So this is the seal that lets us know when we receive our petition of wisdom specifically. But you can apply the characteristics of each fruit or each virgin um, that you may ask for. And when their characteristics are found in you, then you know the petition was heard. Now, let's go through some of these words because there's some things that really um, show um, for us to understand how we're expected to be and how do we know when the Holy Spirit has actually entered into us. Um, we see the pure, we see the peaceable, the gentle, the easy to be entreated. These are the fruits of the Spirit, right? Full of mercy and good fruits. Now, the one uh, we're going to go into it without partiality. Now, the definition is G87. The first word is undistinguished. That means that you're lowly or ordinary, down to earth. Okay. Now, in Romans 15 and 2, it says, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. So we're undistinguished. That means that we're down to earth, we're lowly, we're ordinary, and we're doing all things unto edification for others because we're meek. We're walking in humility. That's only the first word. That's undistinguished. The next word of the definition for without partiality is unintelligible. And that word means impossible to understand. So let's gain an understanding of what unintelligible actually means. Um, this is Paul, and he's actually talking about how he would go and deal with people and gain people so that we can actually understand the context of the scriptures. Kasi, you want to read this? Uh, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20 through 23, please. 1 Corinthians 9 and 20. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. So when Paul started, when he would actually go out and start gaining people, when he would come to the Jews, he would become as a Jew. And he would speak to them in a way that they could understand. The Jews understood the law. So he could speak and reference the law and his teaching to gain them to the good for edification. He wasn't impossible to understand. He wasn't speaking over their heads. He was speaking to them in a way that they can understand to gain them. Continue, Casa, please. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to Allah Hayyim, but under the law to Christ, that I may gain them that are without law. Right. So when he went to people who didn't know the law, he would speak to them in common words so that they could understand what it was that he was referring to. He wouldn't speak, uh, thou shalt not covet. He would say, it's not good for you to want that which belongs to another. So that they can actually understand and see, hey, that is a good thing to not covet, not actually want what belongs to someone else. Because the spirits, and he'll go maybe go into the spirits of how that would impact you and how it would lead to this and that. Where, according to the Jews, or when he would speak to the Jews, he would speak differently. Because he didn't want to be impossible to understand. He wanted to gain them and to edify them to actually... Um, to gain them. Uh, go ahead, Casa, please. To the weak became I as weak, that I may gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. All right. So we have to not be unintelligible because that makes us partial 
if we're impossible to understand, then that means that we have to make a change for the good of edifying others so that people can understand and grasp the concept that we're actually trying to get across. The next word is without dubiousness. Now, without dubiousness means without doubtfulness of another person. Unsettled in opinion about how you feel about someone. All right. And this actually means that because you're skeptical of a person, you treat them different, which would make you partial. So because you don't feel, you don't know them, maybe you, you don't know them well. But because you don't know them, that doesn't give you the right to treat them differently than you normally would treat a person according to the standard of Alahayim. So this is where we have to be mindful that we're walking in the same spirit no matter what is going on or who we're around or how someone may be treating us. And this is these are the things we're going to go on go into in this lesson. That we have to be that same person that Elohim is calling us to be. No matter what's going on around us, no matter what experience or circumstance we're in, we have a calling to be this person according to the standard of Elohim. Uh, can we read First Timothy chapter five verse twenty one, please, Brother Casa? We can. First Timothy five and twenty one. I charge thee before Allah Hayyam and the Lord Yahweh Christ, and the elect angels, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. All right, and this is what we were charged to do: doing nothing by partiality. Um, partiality we're gonna look is G forty three forty six. The definition means a leaning towards, that is figuratively, proclivity, favoritism, partiality. So because we're more comfortable with someone else, it doesn't give us the right to treat the other person differently. So this is without dubiousness. All right. The next word in without partiality is ambiguity. And that's the quality of being open to more than one interpretation. Now, this is we this is what happens when the Holy Spirit comes into us and our love is perfected. Right? Because our love has to be perfected for the Holy Spirit to dwell because she is she is the the breath of Alahim. Right? She comes with all of these things. So these are things that are going to change in you if she comes into you so that we can actually see that power to change has to happen. Now, ambiguity, the quality of being open to more than one interpretation. So not only seeing your own interpretation, that's the only way it can be right. So this will help us to be without partiality, not only being able to see our own perspective, but also being able to see and receive the perspective of others. That will help you be at peace with many. What you think, Brother Casa? That will help come to the knowledge of the truth. If you're having a dialogue and you're open to someone else's interpretation, not being closed-minded, that helps get into the precepts. Okay, I see what you're saying. Let's continue to look at the precepts to make sure everything lines up. Eventually, you're going to get there, Lord willing, because you're open and not closed off as if I'm right or only what I'm saying can be right. It gives space for Allah to work. All right. It takes you away from pride and it takes you away from strife. Easy because to strife, be entreated. Sorry. Right. No, you're good. 
strife is um usually comes from pushing your own perception to be right. So you can see in the pride of it, it's like my interpretation is right. How I see it is right. And no one else can be right if they're not agreeing with me. So you see how these things are getting us away from other spirits that could actually cause us to go astray from Alahayim. The next word is uncertainty. Now, uncertainty means unpredictable to Alahayim and others. Now, this is a very, it's a very important one. It's a, how can Alahayim or someone else trust us if the things we do are never consistent? If one day we're holding it fast to its law or a certain law and the next day we're breaking it, or we're friendly one day and the next day we're striving, that would make us uncertain. And you can see how it would be hard for Alahayim or anyone to trust us, seeing that we're not consistent. We have to be predictable. That the thing that Alahayim is showing us and telling us to do, we're going to do it. And we have to be that predictable. Got anything on that one, Kasim? Daniel was that predictable. They knew he was going to keep the law. So they knew that was the only way to get him to fall. Or at least right. in fall in their eyes. Right. Myself. Believers were predictable. He knew they were going to do what was right to Allah. I am. Believers are predictable. Sorry. So that was going to keep us away from partiality. Is being predictable to do what's right in the sight of Allah I'm always. And to be that same person always. Now we understand that you may have your moments where something may bother you or whatever the case is, but that should be a moment where you sit upon your bed to get back to where it is that you need to be. Because if it's anything other than that, that means that there's something in you that you need to examine. If something else can come upon you and you stay in it. Where it makes you uncertain. So you see how everything gets exposed. By understanding. Everything gets exposed by the standard or understanding what comes with certain things in this regard is the Holy Spirit and loving Allah I am. now that's it on partiality um, the next one was without hypocrisy and we're going to touch on these two things because these two things are very important to cause us not to love Allah I am. Um, without hypocrisy is G505 the first word is undissembled okay undissembled means not pretended genuine undisguised so if we don't want someone to see who we truly are we're walking in hypocrisy The next word is, that is sincere. So undissembled, that is sincere. Without dissimulation, hypocrisy, unfeigned, undisguised, sincere. Right? So if we're not sincere and we're double-minded, seeking our own gain, we're in hypocrisy. We see from the definition of sincere that we have to be free from pretense or deceit Proceeding from genuine feelings. So seeing that dissimulation is the concealment of one's thoughts, feelings, or character. 
we truly get to see exactly what hypocrisy is. Not only um, saying something and not doing it yourself. So we truly get to see the difference between bliss love and honest love in Alahayim. Seeing how he desires us to sincerely put in the work and humility to change. So in being our true selves and sincerity, we're truly able to serve him and to serve others without having to act or change for the time being. But instead, it just being our true nature. So we have work to do so that we can actually be that true person that Allah wants us to be and not have to pretend or disguise ourselves. And we can actually be sincere in who we are and sincere in our objective and our, um, our love. Be sincere in our thoughts, our feelings, and our character. Now, with these understandings, we should have more understanding when we read Romans chapter 12. Um, Kasa, can you read Romans 12 and 1 and 2, please? Sure. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Allah, I am that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Allah, am, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Allah. Am. So now we understand what he means by present your body to live in sacrifice. And that we actually have to be sincere in our love toward Allah to rid of all these things that are causing us to not be sincere so that we can actually um, be acceptable and holy in his sight, which is our reasonable service to do. And not be conformed to this world that means that we don't walk in the ways of the world to be hypocrites where we're not being genuine, but we're trying to put on a front before people so that we'll be received instead of actually putting in the work to actually truly change and be the person that Allah wants us to be which would be us transforming, being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And by investigating the deity, it would cause us to prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect, the will of Allah. And we'll truly get to know Allah by what's good and acceptable and perfect through our experiences of investigating the deity by putting the things that he's telling us to do to action and seeing the results of it. Now this will make our way perfect and help us to keep the second greatest commandment, right? Seeing that we can't keep the second without keeping the first, without learning and keeping the first, right? So let's go on. We're going to jump down to Mark chapter 12, verse 31, please, Brother Casa. Mark 12 and 31. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Right. Let's jump over to Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, please. Galatians 5, verse 14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. So seeing how much we had to learn to keep the first greatest commandment, let's now dive into the second to see what is actually required of us. Seeing that we're building now, we have everything that we need to keep the first greatest commandment. 
And now let's see what we're going to continue to build because you have to continue to build to be able to keep the second. So let's see what else is needful for us to be able to keep the second greatest commandment. Uh, let's jump over to 1 John chapter 3, verse 23, please. All right. 1 John 3 and 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahshua Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. So let's learn how to implement this. Um, let's jump over to Luke chapter 6, verse 31, and we're going to jump over to 33 as well, please. Luke chapter 6, verse 31. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Verse 33. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Now, this is where it gets very interesting because we went through how to love Elohim and how to do acts of love toward Elohim by keeping his commandments. And we've seen how much it took for us to go into how to truly love Elohim. Now, love thy neighbor as thyself. You have to first understand how to love before you can be tested in your love. Because as we just read in Luke chapter 6, verse 33, if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thing have ye? Because Elohim is going to do good to us. If we love him, he's going to do good to us. So you're not really being tested in the second greatest commandment. For sinners also do even the same. So now since you learned that love of keeping the first greatest commandment, now Elohim is taking you to another level of love in the second greatest commandment. And you need that love to understand the love of Elohim in the first greatest commandment to then be able to walk in the second. So if we can only be nice around people that treat us well and we're mean or bothered when around people that don't give us the standard of respect we feel we deserve, then we're no better than someone walking in iniquity. And that's where we actually have to, to take our time to actually work and grow in that first greatest commandment so that we can then be strengthened and strong enough to then walk in the second greatest commandment. And it's a process. It takes time to do these things. It's not something that's just going to happen overnight. You have to grow. You have to learn. You have to be patient with yourself. Other people have to be patient with you. And this is where it gets very difficult is because everybody's not going to have that patience. So you have to be focused on Elohim to get to the place that Elohim wants you to be so that then you can make amends if possible or that person will see you striving, Elohim willing, that person will see you striving for what you're striving for and have mercy and compassion on you for anything that you may have done wrong to them or they feel that you may have done wrong to them. Uh, let's continue in Luke uh, chapter 6, verse 34, Casa, if you don't mind, please. No problem. Verse 34, And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. So if you don't look for a return, but give that which you're able to give, while also keeping what you need to be able to sustain yourself. Knowing that your reward will come from Elohim and not man, truly doing it to help whoever from the love of your heart sincerely. See, So you see, again, you have to have the first one grounded to be able to keep the second greatest commandment. Let's continue, Brother Casa. 
But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Now look at that. Now, in the first commandment, we love love of Allah Hayyam. We learn for Allah Hayyam to love us and to love him. That's the first commandment. The second commandment is to take that love that you've learned and show that love to other people. Because Allah Hayyam does it. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. He's not asking for you to do anything more than what he would do, but he does have understanding that it is a growing process and it takes for you to be at a certain place to be able to implement it and do it. But he is asking us to get to that place to be merciful as he is merciful. That is part of keeping the second greatest commandment. Let's continue, Brother Casa, so we can learn more of the second greatest commandment. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 40, 43 through 48, please. All right. Matthew 5 and 43. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. All right. So this is our admonition to dealing with being mistreated, not to get into a passion with them or to reciprocate how they're treating you, rendering evil for evil. We have to understand, though a person may not reverence al -Hayim, He's still their creator. Allah is still their creator and has dominion over them and can reach them far better than you can and more effective. Our job is to be examples of Allah nature. That's our job. So if they curse you, bless them. And we're going to go further into this. Do good to them that hate you. Because it's the right thing to do. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. If they're doing something wrong, you have to understand that it's not your place. They're doing that to Allah Hayyam. Though you may be the one on the receiving end, it's not personal. Don't take it personal. Because Allah Hayyam is growing you. Allah Hayyam is taking you through it for you to grow in an area, for you to reach a certain place that you need to get to. And by you getting to the place that you need to, it's going to allow that other person to see that you're growing and that and being an example of Allah Hayyam's nature they're going to get a hot coals poured upon their head. And Allah ain't willing that they change. You got anything, Casa Food? Keep going. Oh, this is good. Good understanding of everything is having that spiritual mind and perspective kind of links with that lesson. You talk about not taking things personal because when we understand it's spiritual warfare, you talk about a person that's struggling with something, it's a spirit that's hindering them that's causing the act to go against Allah Hayyam. and us growing in that spiritual mind to see that and not take it personal. Understand that it's all good from Allah Hayyam. There's some good intent Allah Hayyam has in everything that he's doing or everything that he's letting to be done. Just taking it all in stride. And it's for our good, because if it's happening to us, there's something that we have to gain from it. Mm -hmm. So though that person may be um, um, despitefully using you, 
there's something for you to gain in that. Elohim has you going through that for a purpose, for you to see something or to grow in an area. Yeah. Brightness of adversity. Amen. I'm ready whenever you are, Brother Cousin. All right. Matthew 5 and 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So when it says that all the commandments are in these two commandments, you actually get to see what he means by perfect. He's talking about learning what true love is and walking in that true love and reciprocating that love to others, no matter how they may be treating you. That's perfect and being sincere through it all. All right. So it's having a sincere heart towards all without double-mindedness, hypocrisy, or partiality. Loving Allah, which includes keeping his commandments and loving our brother as ourselves, which we need to be clothed with the fruits to accomplish. So now we're seeing how the fruits and wisdom actually come into the picture. Because without the first part, it's the commandments, which the act of showing Allah that we love him is to keep his commandments. And the second part, loving thy brother as thyself or loving thy neighbor as thyself, you can't keep it without having all the fruits, all the garments and the and, and wisdom. So you see how it contains all of the commandments. It contains everything. Because you need everything to accomplish it. Um, let's jump over to James chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, please. James chapter 2, verse 8. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and you do well. But if you have respect of persons, you commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. All right. So... I'll tell you, uh, for me personally, I, I'll give you my own personal mindset in, in, in living in life. Um, I do my best at everything I do because I understand who I'm doing it for. I understand that I'm doing it for Allah. I'm doing everything for Allah. Even if I'm washing the dishes, I'm doing it for Allah. I'm doing my best at it. I'm cleaning the floor. I'm doing my best at it. And um, even if I'm doing something for someone else, it's the same thing. I'm doing my best at it. I'm doing my best because all my works are for Allah. I am. Not because I want them to be pleased with me. So I'm not doing it just for someone to be pleased with me. But I know if I give my all and everything I do, it's going to become a habit. And I'm not going to be slack in any area of my life, nor am I going to be sluggish in anything. So I give my all at everything that I do. And it, it has good fruit. Because when I put forth the effort and everything at the same standard of effort, I'm going to be prosperous at some point. Even if I lack understanding or I lack wisdom in a certain area or 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 don't know how to do something as well, the effort makes up for it. 
And eventually, if I continue, I'm going to continue to get better and better because I'm putting forth all the effort that I have into doing it. And it starts spreading to all parts of my life where I start getting better at many different things because I'm putting forth that same effort to do everything. And I, I hope that really helps somebody uh, for perspective um, that may struggle with partiality or may struggle with being sluggish in certain areas, uh, especially when it's an area that's harder, that doesn't come as natural for some people. For for my for what I teach my family is when you run across something that's harder for you, you have to put forth more effort. But some things are going to come naturally. Some things are going to be easy because you just may be good at Alahim may have just given you that skill or given you that understanding. But some things are going to be hard. And those things that are hard, you got to put forth more effort to accomplish it or to understand it. And that's okay. But you have to, you have to do it. Now, now be impartial in the law to have respect to persons and whom you have love for or show love to is a transgression. But instead of hatred covering us with its garment, let us ask for charity from Elohim so we may overcome partiality. Uh, let's jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. Brother Casa, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Right. So charity is undistinguished. Charity vaunteth not itself. So charity is down to earth. Go ahead, Casa. Is not puffed up. Right. So charity is not unintelligible. It's not puffed up. It's going to help give the understanding and the edification. And it's going to do it in humility. Go ahead, Brother Casa. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Right. So charity doeth not behave itself unseemly. That means that charity keepeth the commandments. Seeketh not her own, so she thinks upon the needs of others. It's not easily provoked. That means that she's not easily angered. Thinketh no evil. So charity doesn't project onto others. Continue, Casa, please. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Right. So charity doesn't rejoice in iniquity. Charity doesn't rejoice when somebody falls or somebody doesn't do right. And charity isn't quick to run to iniquity or to run to mischief, but rejoiceth in the truth. So, we have to be very mindful of even when we watch TV, when we see something that's not right, to not laugh at it and not rejoice in it. So we have to rejoice in the truth. We have to rejoice in what's good and true and right to Elohim. Continue, Casa, please. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Amen. So if we walk in this, what will it enable us to do? Can we jump over to Ephesians 3 and 17 through 19, please, Casa? Ephesians 3 and 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, 
that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of Allah Hayyim. Now that's interesting. It says uh, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. So that's the first commandment. The first commandment roots us and grounds us in love. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, because now we're at the second greatest commandment. That ye may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height. So if we keep the greatest and the second greatest commandment, we're going to understand the heavens. We're going to be a part of it. They said that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height. It's talking about the heavens. And to know the love of Christ with passive knowledge. Because you can have all the knowledge in the world and not understand these greatest two commandments and not making it to the kingdom. But if we put forth our labors in these areas, it will prosper us in the fullness of Allah Hayyam. Can we jump over to um, Sirach 5 and 11, please? Sure, Sirach 5 and 11. Be swifter here and let thy life be sincere and with patience give answer. So these things are going to help us to walk in love. Be swifter here and let thy life be sincere. And with patience, give answer. So let's be fast to listen. Let's be slow to speak. All right. Continue. I thought we're going to jump over to Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Romans 12 and 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. So modern day... I think they call this being fake. Remember, the simulation is the concealment of one's thoughts, feelings, or character. All right? So let love be without the simulation. Don't be fake. Truly love, sincerely. All right? And if you have some fakeness that you have to work out of you, work it out and be honest with yourself. Abhor that which is evil, which will help you get rid of that fakeness and cleave to that which is good. If we're sincere in all our works, it destroys the simulation. So if this is something that you have to put more effort to, put forth the effort. And be honest. Be honest with yourself so that you can overcome it. Let's continue to learn. We're still in the second greatest commandment. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 37 through 38. Brother Kassel, please. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, Pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. So what we put out into the world comes back to us. So let us put out good works for Allah Hayyam, that we may receive good from him, seeing he has the power to give and take away, which no man truly hath upon the earth. Only Allah can give and truly take away. So, let's not judge. Let's edify and help one another. Let's not condemn people and say that they're good for nothing or they're never going to make it or never going to get it. Let's forgive so that we can be forgiven. Let's give so, so that things will be given unto us. We have to do the work. 
and we have to walk in the love that Allah is showing us so that we can give it to others and show them that same love that they may have not received from Allah So count your blessings. Let's learn some more things that will help us in keeping the second greatest commandment. Uh, let's jump over to Romans chapter 12, verse 10 through 21, please. Romans 12 and 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Right. Right. So we want to prefer one another. This is where we get away from that partiality and that, um, what was the word, Casa? Um, uh, dubiousness. Right. So we have to be without dubiousness and preferring one another. Not only the people that we feel comfortable with are the ones that we know, but preferring everyone in Allah. Now, I'm not saying that you be uh, naive. You definitely have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Right? Because some people don't have your best interests at heart. And of course, we have we have scriptural boundaries for that and wisdom so that Allah protects us from our enemies. But as far as someone that may not have your try to be harming you, but you just may not know that well, prefer one another. Not slothful in business. Right. So we don't want to be uh, sluggish, but we want to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And we want to put forth that effort in doing all things. Um, continue, Brother Casa, please. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing an instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be humble, be down to earth. Go ahead, Brother Kyle. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Mm. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Be sincere in everything that you do. Right. But we don't want to be hypocrites. Continue, Casa, please. If it be possible... As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Yeah. So if, if someone does something wrong to you, don't get into your passion and take it personally and go and try to to give them and meet unto them what you think is right for them for a punishment. Leave it up to Allah Hayyam. Say, Allah Hayyam, that's in your hands. And you continue on focusing on what it is in the in the standard of Yachi and keep your eyes on Ardono to 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 walk and get to where you need to get and focus on what you need to focus on. And let Allah Hayyam avenge that. Let Allah deal with that person. That's not your job. Continue, Casa, please. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 
how can we be the children of light if darkness has the ability to dim our light? We can't have any place for any evil to come into us to cause us to go astray from what we're called to in Allah I am. This is why we're here to exhort and help one another unto profitable works. So we can't be overcome of evil. We have to overcome evil with good. And we're going to talk about what happens if we're overcome of evil. Um, let's continue in Romans 15, verse 1 through 4, please. Romans 15 and 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification, for even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written afore were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So these are the things that are going to help us keep the second greatest commandment. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. All right. All these records, all these records that we're reading and that we're going through and we're learning in are for our guidance and help through this life that we may make it to Allah and know them and know Allah in this world that we may dwell with them in the next world. That's the purpose of all these scriptures and all these books that Allah has left us. To help guide us through life so that we may make it unto him. Now, what does James exhort us on so that we don't go off of that path? Uh, James chapter 1 verse 16, please. James 1 and 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All right. So remember when we talked about uncertainty? All right. James is exhorting us, don't err up. Okay. But understand this, for every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So Allah giveth to you and cometh down from the father of lights. Like it's coming from him. You need to understand that. With whom is no variableness. Now the word variableness means susceptibility to change. And this is why I said that uncertainty. Allah is not uncertain. And neither should we. We shouldn't be uncertain either. Liableness or aptness to alter. Changeableness. As the variableness of the weather. Inconstancy. Fickleness. Unsteadiness. Levity. As the variableness of human passion. So human passions. Causes us. To be changeable this is why we have to truly have that temperance and that self-control and moderation not to be moved by our emotions because it makes us changeable and Allah is not changeable neither shadow of turning so he's not going to change he's going to continue to be the same Allah each and every day of our lives and he's never going to change so remember sincerity is incorruptible and immortal for Allah is not like as a man to be given over to passions and it's not uncertain but it's sincere so he doesn't change who he is as a man would and it's calling us to be as them in sincerity without giving to passion 
so we can be incorruptible and immortal in our mode of operating like them. He showed us that we can do it since Christ did it as a man, just as we are. Can we read on Hebrews 13 and 8 real quick, Brother Costa, please? Yes, Hebrews 13 and 8. Yache Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And he's just like the Father, Ahaya. He doesn't change either because he learned from Elohim. He learned from his father, Ahaya. So we can be sincere entirely as Elohim to be perfect as our Lord, the Son of Man, is perfect like the Father. For all the things we're learning is preparing us for what? When our love is perfected in Christ Yache, that's the true question. What is the end goal of our labors? To understand that, we must grow and become sound in Elohim and his commandments. Our love is the key to converting others. Allowing our love to be the boundary is what we're called unto, and that is exercised when one is firm in the faith, seasoned in experiences, and clothed with the garments of the holy virgins. All right. Can we read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 through 12, Brother Casa? And Yes, please. Sure. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9. For I think that Elohim has set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. Now, what we're about to go into, this was the calling for the apostles. This is the standard that the apostles had to keep. So that we can understand the the highest expectation for us and the goal for us to reach. Continue, Casa, please. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Right. And he's gonna go into why <laughs> why he's saying what he's saying. Go ahead, Casa, please. For we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Right. So the apostles had to humble themselves in their knowledge. All the knowledge that Christ gave them when he was upon the earth, and they went out and taught after Christ was um, crucified, they had to humble themselves in everything. All their knowledge, their understanding, and their wisdom that was given unto them, because they all received the Holy Spirit. But many lifted themselves up against them, being wise in their own conceits. So you see why he said, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. So you know more than us. And that's how it was that people would lift themselves up. Continue, Casa. We are weak, but ye are strong. So as people learn, they may feel they know enough and it makes them hard to teach feeling that they're strong or stronger in the faith or stronger in their walk. So the apostles, they had to be of a lower countenance, not striving in knowledge. So though others felt that they were strong, the apostles had to be weak. And in their weakness, it made them strong because they just went into more of the fruit, more into the virgins. And in their humility, it made them stronger though they may seem weak to people. Go ahead, Kasa. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. The apostles suffered many calamities for the sake of doing what was right in the sight of Elohim, and not men. So though they may have been despised in men's sight, and others being held in honor because of their own self-pleasing or the pleasing of men, the apostles had to be content and focused on Yahweh and his standard. All right, so they weren't doing it for honor. Not of men. So those men may have been honored in the sight of men, as the Pharisees and scribes were, and the apostles were despised. Go ahead, Brother Casa, please. 
Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. So they're doing the work. They're working and they're sacrificing for the sake of edifying people. Not looking after their own, but looking after one another. So they're actually keeping the second greatest commandment. Go ahead, Brother Cost. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. And labor, working with our own hands. So they're putting forth the work. They're doing, they're giving it their all. Now, being reviled, they said, we bless. Now, I want to get into these words so that we can actually understand how this can be present day. So that we can understand how we are expected to be. Uh, once we get to a certain place in our walk and our journey. Revel means to reproach, that is vilify, revel. So one may vilify you and say all these bad things about you, though you may have not done anything wrong in the sight of Elohim toward them. Just as the apostles didn't do anything wrong in the sight of Elohim towards people, um, there are some exceptions, um, like Peter, but it didn't happen often. Um, but they vilify you, and they reproach you, and they may even um, project things upon you um, to to pretty much um, destroy your image. But what are we supposed to do when people do things like that to us? We bless. Now, the definition of bless means to speak well of. That is, religiously, to bless. Thank or invoke a benediction upon, prosper, bless, or praise. So, if someone reproaches or vilifies us, we speak well of them. Because if we don't, we're going to get placed for that poison to enter into our heart and cause us to, to render evil for evil. And that evil or that darkness is going to overtake the light. So we bless them. We speak well of them. We do not go to the standard in which they're operating. And that is our standard. Continue, Brother Casa, please. All right. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Now, persecute is G1377 to pursue in a hostile manner in any way whatever to harass trouble molest one to persecute to be mistreated suffer persecution on account of something without the idea of hostility to run after follow after someone okay. so though someone may be treating us wrong and persecuting us or harassing us or troubling us or mistreating us we have to suffer it the definition of suffer is g430 it means to hold oneself up against that is figuratively to put up with bear with endure forbear suffer All right so we have to put up with it though they may be persecuting us or doing something that's wrong by mistreating us we suffer it and we be patient in our suffering with joy. This is the second greatest commandment. We're, uh, let's continue, Brother Casa. Being defamed, we entreat. Now, defamed is G987. Defamed means specifically to speak impuously. Speak, blaspheme, blaspheme, blasphemous blasphemy, defame, rail on, 
revile, speak evil. So though someone may defame you or speak impetuously, that means they're speaking very, very, they're speaking quickly or hastily. Though they may defame your character, what do we do? We entreat. Now, entreat is G3870, which means to call near. That is invite, invoke by imploration, hortation, or consolation. Beseech, call for, be of good comfort, desire, give Exhort, exhortation, entreat, pray. So though they may defame your character and maybe even rail on you, maybe even get upset and, and get into a passion, we entreat them. If you can't call them near and gain them by just consoling them, just consoling them, then you pray for them. But we don't get into a passion with them, nor do we get into trying to um, to exonerate our name. Let them speak. Because if I get into a passion and exonerating my name, that takes me out of my good character. If you're able to get a reaction out of me, that takes me away from my good character. If I can't call you near to me in my gentleness and meekness, then the only thing I can do for you is pray. and be of good comfort in the midst of it. Now the Thayer's definition for entreat is to call, is to call to one side, call for or summon, to address, speak to, so that we can actually understand the different things that we can do to entreat, depending on the situation. To address, speak to, call to, call upon, which may be done in a way of exhortation, entreaty, comfort, instruction, or etc. To admonish, exhort, to beg, entreat, beseech, to strive to appease by entreaty, to console, to encourage, and strengthen by consolation, to comfort. To receive consolation, be comforted. To encourage, strengthen. Exhorting and comforting and encouraging to instruct, teach. So you can see how there's many different ways that we can actually entreat though someone is overtaken maybe by the spirit of anger or hatred towards us. And that actually helps us keep the greatest commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves. Right. So all of these things that we're going through right now is to strengthen us in understanding and knowledge so that we can apply it within ourselves and to change and adapt ourselves to be able to walk in it naturally. Or to remind ourselves to do it. But it is a growth. And it's a place that we have to get to. And everybody's not at the same place. And you have to accept where you are in your journey to be able to walk from where you are. Because if you try to walk from somewhere that you're not, you're going to skip things that are important that will actually help you in your journey and that you're going to need at some point. So take your time and get to the place that Elohim needs you to be 
and walk from the place that Allah has you so that you can actually grow correctly. You got anything before we keep going, Kafa? Everything you're saying is good, man. Thank you. All right. I'm ready for you to read, brother. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Yache I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. So this was the calling and standard of the apostles. So it's not a place where everyone is going to be in their respective journeys, but it's a good goal in Yache to get there. For when we start putting up boundaries from a person that may have hurt us or in our bitterness, that boundary prohibits you from being clothed in the fruits. These boundaries tend not to be according to the wisdom of Alahayim. So because you're in your emotions, you start moving fleshly in works of the flesh, which start conforming you to become like the person you're putting up boundaries against. We can't meet people with the same energy that they meet us with if it's negative. And that's a growth for us in the faith to keep that love always, even when it's not reciprocated. For love is stronger than any spirit and can scatter even darkness. So just giving examples of scriptural boundaries and wisdom. Um, so Rock 4 and 22 says, Accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. That's a boundary. But that's a boundary according to the wisdom of Allah Hayyam. See, when we start making our own boundaries, that's when we go off because we're going into a boundary based off our own passions. And that's where the enemy loves us to be. Drifting off in the sea away from Alahayim. But when we get closer to Alahayim and we start implementing the boundaries that are good and righteous from Alahayim, it protects us and it causes us to be able to keep the commandments and to bear the fruits of the spirit so definitely be mindful of boundaries and examining when you may have a feeling to put up a boundary to examine the law and the, and the wisdom scriptures to see if that boundary is actually true according to Allah and it's his wisdom and understanding before you go apply it Got anything, Casa? Uh, yes, sir. Um, as the scriptures say, be not wise in our own conceits. Uh, it also says, do nothing without discretion. And before every enterprise and every action, let there be counsel beforehand. And while I am gave people in the faith for the perfecting of the saints, the apostles, teachers, ministers, and such, so get counsel, let that humility, that love abound and get counsel before going into something, especially if you, I think we are getting to the place if we're not there yet, we're starting to understand ourselves and know we're not sure about what we're doing. Reach out to somebody and talk before you go into something that can possibly hurt you or someone else in the long run. In regards yeah, to boundaries man. and such. You got yes, anything sir. else um, other than boundaries? This is a good foundation for perspective and getting better understanding how to draw near to Allah. It's good teaching. That's all I got. All right. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, please watch any of our other lessons um, we do have many playlists on youtube please visit the website www.hebrewreaders.com and um you can always reach out to us at hebrewreaders at gmail.com uh, we love you all we hope you all enjoy your shabbat today and we hope the teaching is edifying and it helps you in your in your journey Allah keep you all
Peace. Peace be with you all. HRC, 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 HRC,